Going and visiting herring runs in the spring in Massachusetts is an outdoor ritual that goes back longer, I think, than uh, I think all the way to the Indians. You know, it was just, it's the sign of spring. It's the sign of things to come. Just going to see the herring in the spring is just, you know, it's cultural. It really is. It's cultural. Patrick Paquette is a representative of recreational fishermen in Massachusetts. He's been fishing these New England waters his whole life. For the last 15 years, though, he's been fighting a battle for some of the most important fish in this ecosystem, alewives and blueback herring, known as river herring. In New England, river herring fishing is a centuries-old tradition, a staple of the local economy and an important part of New England's culture. Captain Buddy Vanderhoop is a member of the Wampanoag tribe of Native Americans on Martha's Vineyard. For thousands of years, his ancestors have been fishing these waters for river herring. Herring is one of the most important fish in the ocean. Everything eats herring, uh, the scup, the sea bass, the flounder, and the striped bass, all the way to tuna fish, bluefish, whales, everything eats herring. The natives my ancestors used to salt them, smoke them, and eat them fresh here, and also eat their roe. The roe is a delicacy, and it's a ritual, and it was, uh, it's been here for centuries, so. Four Atlantic states now prohibit the taking of river herring. Over the last two decades, some river herring runs have declined by almost 95% along the Atlantic coast. The Massachusetts Department of Marine Fisheries reported that in 1989, there were approximately 388,000 river herring migrating up the Merrimack River. In 2007, there were only 1,170. Today, Patrick is working with local communities to clean up fish ladders and areas where river herring spawn so these fish have a chance to reproduce and grow their populations. Tens of millions of dollars, even more effort in just human time has been invested in improving rivers, um, here at least in Massachusetts. And the river herring went down, they didn't go up. Despite restoration work and harvest bans in four states, river herring remain at historic lows. And the emergence of another threat has river herring advocates like Patrick sounding the alarm. The one largest source of mortality that we know of, human-caused mortality, is industrial fishing, the practice of midwater trawling, whether it be by a single or in a pair trawl, it is a significant cause to the decline of river herring. River herring spend most of their lives at sea and get caught in the trawler's nets along with Atlantic herring. Atlantic herring are an important source of bait for other commercial fisheries. Midwater trawlers are poorly monitored, but available information shows that hundreds of thousands of river herring are caught each year. In 2008, nearly 150,000 river herring were caught in a single net which is more than all the river herring returning to Rhode Island's three largest runs in 2009. As the river herring populations decline, Patrick continues his fight. We need drastic action by our federal government. We need fisheries managers to do the investigation, to find out what's going on. The only way we get good science is by collecting good data. And the only way we get good data, these boats must be monitored 100%. We believe that the only way to know what they're catching is to watch what they're catching. We're starting to lose that culture. Um, like we're, we're losing the whole thing. That's what got so many people upset. Like we're losing a way of life in New England. And you know, we're running out of options. 